Here's one that's been requested for quite some time, the Latino world order in WCW. The NWO storyline in WCW had pretty much consumed the whole company. Splinter groups and faction infighting had become the norm in world championship wrestling, as the direction of the new world order took a lot of questionable twists and turns. When people think of this era of WCW though, they also think of the incredible cruiserweight division that was showcased on Monday nights, and a fair portion of these cruiserweights cruiserweights were luchadors. While fans would heap praise on WCW's cruiserweight division, the wrestlers involved could never break into the main event. Eric Bischoff had a steady money train with the New World Order and no one was going to disrupt it. Even when viewers showed their displeasure by changing the channel during WCW Nitro's final hour. Eddie Guerrero was brought into WCW by Eric Bischoff. Those who watched the Reliving the War series here on Wrestling Bios would know that Guerrero was one of the most exciting aspects of WCW Nitro during its first few months on television. He was extremely reliable when it came to delivering in the ring, and even before the Cruiserweight division was formally introduced to WCW viewers, Eddie was on Nitro having matches with the likes of Dean Malenko, Ric Flair, Brian Pullman and others. Keep in mind that Nitro was a one hour show back then. Then, getting featured on Nitro wasn't easy, but Eddie proved to be an exciting superstar that fans wanted to see on television screens. In mid-1996, the whole direction of WCW changed when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash showed up, creating the New World Order faction and really turning the structure of WCW TV shows upside down. As the NWO got more and more members and as the t-shirts started selling in record numbers, more and more time was given to the heel faction while other stars of WCW were forced into opening segments and throwaway angles. Many former superstars report that pitching ideas backstage had become pointless as Eric Bischoff just couldn't find the time to deal with his mid-card talent. It wasn't just all about the NWO on TV screens, but it was all about the NWO backstage too. Guys who knew how to play the political game used their stroke to stay on top while the backbone of WCW, the cruiserweights, worked so hard in the ring and got little recognition for their efforts. Better spots on the card or better money was completely out of the question. One day, Eddie Guerrero had just about as much as he could take, and he approached Eric Bischoff in regards to pushing the hard-working mid-carders of WCW or pay them more money. According to Guerrero's book, Eric Bischoff got so worked up during his meeting with Eddie that Eric knocked over a cup of coffee and it spilled on Guerrero. Eric Bischoff intentionally throwing coffee on one of his wrestlers sure makes for a great story, but this didn't happen. It was apparently a heated argument and that was about it. There aren't many details out there about how the meeting was resolved. Maybe Eric sweet talked Eddie or maybe Eric just reminded Eddie that he's under contract and if he doesn't like it, he can sit at home. None Nonetheless, the whole coffee incident was used as a work shoot on WCW television. Eddie came out on the 17th of August 1998 episode of Nitro holding his luggage and a cup of coffee. Eddie said in the ring, Eric Bischoff, I've been coming here to work just to be mistreated by you. On the road, on TV, I give you my 100% and I give these people my 100% whether they like me or whether they don't. I give you the best show there is and you know it. And you can't give me the time of day in the back to listen to what I have to say, Eric. You know what? I don't care anymore. You've got a lot of young talent here in WCW and all you do is hold us down for people you pay a lot of money to. This is personal between me and you, Eric. I come to work with my heart and you step on it and I'm tired of it. You hold me down. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something personal you have against me. What is it about me that stops me from climbing up the ladder in this profession? What is it? about me. If losing my dignity means having to put up with WCW and NWO red, black, white, whatever the hell it is, then I don't care. So Eric Bischoff, I'm telling you this right now, I want out of my contract no matter what it takes, who I gotta speak to or what it is. And here, let me save you some time, Eric Bischoff. Eddie then threw coffee over himself in the middle of the ring, going on to say, I'm throwing coffee on myself. As far as I'm concerned, Eric Bischoff, you can take this job and shove it up your you-know-what. 
You have to remember that Eric Bischoff wanted to blend reality into his wrestling shows and this whole Eddie Guerrero angle did just that. People didn't know what was real and what was scripted here, but two weeks later on Nitro it was made pretty clear to smart fans that this was the beginning of a storyline. Eddie Guerrero was booked into a match with Brian Adams on Nitro and Eddie lay down in the middle of the ring after the opening bell. When Adams wouldn't pin Guerrero, Eddie tried to force his opponent to hit him in the ring and when Adams tried to fight, Eddie would just cover up and not fight back. Eventually Adams took the easy win while Eddie laughed at the camera. The angle WCW was going for here is that Eddie was being forced to work his contracted dates but Eddie refused to actually wrestle in the ring. Eddie grabbed a microphone after the match saying he won't give Eric Bischoff the opportunity to sue him. On the September 14th episode of Nitro, Eddie and Eric bumped into each other backstage and Eric sent Guerrero to Japan due to Eddie's refusal to work in WCW. Eddie did indeed go over to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He teamed up with Chris Jericho and he worked as the Black Tiger in a G1 Climax special. When Eddie came back to the United States, he was kept off TV until the October 5th, 1998 episode of Nitro. And it was on this night that the Latino World Order was formed. Eddie Guerrero jumped into the ring during a cruiserweight match pitting Hector Garza against Damian. Eddie asked the competitors what has Eric Bischoff done for their careers. As far as Eddie can see it, Bischoff has forced the Hispanic wrestlers of WCW to wrestle each other day in and day out without getting any opportunity to wrestle main eventers or move up the cards. Eddie reminds Garza and Damian that Eric Bischoff won't even pay for their rental cars and guys have to share their hotel rooms to save on expenses, going on to say that the only way to make money in WCW is to hang out with Hollywood Hulk Hogan while kissing up to the boss. Eddie reveals his Latino World Order t-shirt, saying that he can't make change on his own but all the luchadors in WCW could band together and bring the fight to Eric, taking what they want instead of waiting for it to be handed out. The audience booed when they saw the LWO logo after Eddie had gotten a great ovation when he initially interrupted the match, further proving here that the audience was seriously burnt out on the New World Order factions towards the end of 1998. Although the LWO would be vastly different from NW Hollywood and the Wolfpack, fans back then didn't know that. It looked like even more saturation being added to the NWO brand. So the very first members of the Latino World Order were Damian, Hector Garza and leader Eddie Guerrero. Another member would get added on the October 8th episode of Thunder. El Dandy and Tokyo Magnum had their matchup interrupted by the NWO Scott Norton, the reigning IWGP heavyweight champion at the time, and this resulted in the match getting ruled as a no contest. The Latino World Order came to the ring afterwards and Eddie Guerrero told El Dandy that Eric Bischoff sent Norton down to the ring and these beatings will kill keep happening unless El Dandy unites with the Latino World Order. Tokyo Magnum tried to get in on the action but Eddie snapped back, saying that this is a Latino thing and it has nothing to do with Japanese wrestlers. El Dandy put on the Latino World Order shirt and we now have four members. A six-man lucha match was booked for the October 12th episode of Nitro. La Parca, Viano 5 and Ciclope vs Psychosis, Super Colo and Chavo Guerrero. Keep in mind that Chavo was doing his crazy gimmick around this time where he ran around with his little horse named Pepe. After the match, the four members of the Latino World Order came to the ring and Eddie Guerrero said... Now you see what I'm talking about, they keep making us fight each other. It's obvious that Eric Bischoff doesn't respect our people, he doesn't respect our traditions, he doesn't respect La Raza. I would like to see any NWO guy come out here and do the things that this man does while pointing to Psychosis, or the things that this man does while pointing to Chavo, and wrestle out here with his heart. Eric Bischoff, you take advantage of the economical situation. You bring these guys in and you pay them peanuts and then you treat them with disrespect. Eddie then says that Psychosis is now part of the LWO. Chavo looks at Pepe and storms out of the ring. And so there were five, Eddie Guerrero, Hector Garza, Damian, El Dandy and Psychosis. The next week on Nitro, four members of the LWO took on four luchadors who still hadn't gained access to the group. Chavo Guerrero, Ciclope, La Parca and Les Mark Jr. After the match, La Parca was brought into the group while Eddie Guerrero continued to run Eric Bischoff into the ground. And once again, Chavo 
of O was snubbed. On the October 22nd episode of Thunder though, the LWO's most meaningful storyline kicked off when Eddie tried to recruit Rey Mysterio Jr. into the Latino world order. Mysterio was the first person to turn down the LWO, telling Eddie that he prefers to run on his own before leaving the ring and leaving Eddie a little dumbfounded. Something you may have noticed here too by the way is that so far the LWO were still only working with other luchadors and cruiserweights in WCW. Their spot on the cards hadn't improved and they weren't breaking any glass ceilings by wearing LWO t-shirts. What I will say though is that it was good to see so many mid-card cruiserweights actually get some sort of storyline. A vast majority of WCW cruiserweight matches just happened at random with no angle going into the matches so at least there was a little story here. It's alarming though and also very telling that the Latino World Order were not featured at all on the Halloween Havoc 1998 card. A match between Perry Saturn and Eddie Guerrero on the October 26th episode of Nitro ended when the LWO interfered and a new member was shown on TV screens. Arturo Flores, also known as Spider, was a personal friend of Eddie Guerrero and he would act as the LWO's bodyguard. The next week, Saturn wanted a little revenge and when the LWO once again interfered, Conan ran to the ring to have words with Eddie Guerrero. Conan said that this was the wrong way of doing things and these gang beatings weren't proving anything. Eddie told Conan to go back to his, quote, Anglo-punk Wolfpack buddies and it looked like the LWO were also going to begin feuding with Conan here. Later in the evening, Psychosis was able to defeat Rey Mysterio thanks to the LWO causing a distraction. Later that week on Thunder, a match was booked between Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. If Eddie won the match then Rey would have to join the LWO. The match ended in a time limit draw, meaning Mysterio didn't have to join the faction just yet. A rematch was booked on the next episode of Night but Chavo Guerrero tried to steal the LWO shirt that was reserved for Mysterio, causing a distraction that led to Ray getting the pinfall win. Finally, on the November 16th episode of Nitro, Ray Mysterio Jr. was forced to join the Latino World Order when he was beaten by Eddie Guerrero. Juventud Guerrero tried to help Mysterio, but he ended up costing Ray the match. Rey Mysterio came to the ring on the November 19th episode of Thunder for a match against Billy Kidman. If Rey could beat Kidman, then Mysterio would become the number one contender for Juventud Guerrero's Cruiserweight Championship. Eddie made sure the match didn't happen, telling Mysterio that the LWO wasn't about one man hogging the glory and reaching individual goals. To show that the Latino World Order was all about looking out for each other, Eddie told Rey to get out of the ring and the match was changed to Kidman vs Guerrero. Mysterio wasn't pleased, but Eddie Eddie still scored the win by using the ropes as leverage. Even though Guerrero got the win, Billy Kidman still wrestled Juventud Guerrero at World War 3 and during Juventud's entrance, the Hoovy Juice revealed that he was the newest member of the Latino World Order. Eddie Guerrero came out to make the announcement but Rey Mysterio showed up too, quickly realising that this was why Eddie replaced him in the Billy Kidman match on Thunder. Mysterio helped Billy Kidman win the Cruiserweight title, leading to Rey throwing his LWO shirt in Eddie's face and running away from the Latino World Order faction. The next night on Monday Nitro, Eddie told Ray that he was contractually obliged to remain in the Latino World Order and Ray was presented with a new LWO t-shirt that Eddie said matches the size of Eddie's expectations towards Ray's future in the Latino World Order. Billy Kidman granted Mysterio a title match later in the broadcast but Juventud Guerrero made sure that Ray didn't win the Cruiserweight Championship. Eddie Guerrero added Ciclope to the Latino World Order on the December 3rd, 1998 episode of Thunder, expanding the numbers and trying to create a unified faction of underappreciated superstars in World Championship Wrestling. The sad part though is that the faction's time together was already approaching its end. It was announced a little later that Rey Mysterio would meet Juventud Guerrero the following week on Thunder to determine the number one contender for the Cruiserweight title and this infuriated Eddie. Eddie was trying to call the shots within the Latino World Order and Eddie felt that the Cruiserweight title was clouding Rey Mysterio's judgement, but there was nothing Guerrero could do about it. The latest member of the LWO, Silver King, got a chance to prove himself against Mysterio on the December 7th episode of Nitro. Keep in mind that Mysterio was still a reluctant member of the LWO during this time period. Silver King couldn't get the job done. Mysterio won the match, much to the dismay of Eddie Guerrero. 
The Juventud Guerrero vs Rey Mysterio match on Thunder ended in a no contest after the Latino World Order interfered and attacked Rey. Billy Kidman was able to pull Mysterio out of the ring, but the match ending meant we still didn't know who would face Kidman for the Cruiserweight title at Starcade 1998. Viano 5 joined the LWO on the December 14th, 1998 episode of Nitro after Eddie beat him in the opening match. Mysterio had a match with Kidman a little later on, but the LWO showed up and they had a beating into both men. It was then announced that Rey Mysterio and Juventud Guerrero would both challenge Billy Kidman at Starcade 1998 in a triple threat cruiserweight title match. And to teach Mysterio a lesson, Eddie put himself in a match with Rey on the Nitro episode just before Starcade. Hunt this one down, by the way. The two men go for around 50 15 minutes and the audience for this whole episode of Nitro was excellent. A highly recommended match here and one that isn't talked about too much thanks to the Mysterio vs Guerrero classic at Halloween Havoc 1997. Eddie ended up getting the win here when Billy Kidman inadvertently hit Mysterio, getting a little heat here for their upcoming Starcade match. At Starcade, Billy Kidman was able to defeat Juventud Guerrera and Rey Mysterio, successfully defending his cruiserweight title in the process. Eddie Guerrero got involved in the match, but his interference did nothing to help Juventud Guerrera, and after the bout, Eddie was livid. The leader of the LWO said that Mysterio and Guerrero were nothing but embarrassments and they didn't deserve to wear the Latino World Order colours. Eddie says if you want a job done right, then you gotta do it yourself, and Guerrero challenges Billy Kidman to a cruiserweight title match. At Starcade. Kidman accepts the match and we have yet another cruiserweight title bout here on the pay-per-view. In the end, Juventud Guerrero tried to help Eddie but Rey Mysterio helped Billy Kidman. Kidman successfully defended the cruiserweight title for the second time in one night and the problems within the LWO continued to manifest. Eddie got a little payback the following night on Nitro when he and Juventud Guerrero beat Mysterio and Kidman in a tag team matchup. This would be Eddie's last Nitro match for around six months. On the very same episode of Nitro, Ric Flair faced Eric Bischoff in the main event. If Ric Flair won, Eric Bischoff would give up control of WCW. If Bischoff won, then the Nature Boy would be forced into retirement. Flair won the match, and Flair's new influence within WCW was used to ride off the LWO. On New Year's Day 1999, Eddie was involved in a car accident which would result in Guerrero missing around 6 months of television. And on the first episode of Thunder of 1999, the LWO's breakup was a immediately put into place when the faction got attacked multiple times by the New World Order. On the following episode of Nitro, Ric Flair called the LWO to the ring and the new president of WCW said that the NWO had broken Eddie's leg off camera during Thunder. Rick then tells the other Latino World Order members that because Eric Bischoff is now gone, the luchadors of WCW will now get the recognition they deserve along with the money, the fast cars and the women. All they have to do is remove the LWO colours and fight in WCW's corner. Every member hands in their LWO shirt except Rey Mysterio, the one LWO member who had more problems with Eddie Guerrero than anyone else. Later on in the evening, Lex Luger ripped the LWO shirt off Rey's back before giving him a beating in the ring. NWO teammate Conan came to the ring wanting to know why Lex was going after Rey, seeing as Rey was a close friend of Conan's. The rest of the NWO came to the ring and Conan was kicked out of the New World Order for standing up for his buddy. This led to Rey Mysterio feuding with the outside and it also led to the creation of the Filthy Animal Stable within WCW. And that's the story of the Latino World Order. It's easy to look at the faction and find irony in the fact that the LWO only got a chance to mix it up with the main eventers when the faction was getting disbanded and also when Eddie Guerrero wasn't around to take part in the festivities. Many fans brush off the LWO as another weak mid-card team using the NWO branding to unsuccessfully climb up the cards, but I think the LWO gave a little purpose to a bunch of guys who were practically doing nothing to begin with except competing in meaningless matches week in 
in week out, no one was ever going to come in and disrupt the NWO, even at the end of 1998 when the faction was watered down to the point of being embarrassing, that glass ceiling was always there and no matter how good you were in the ring, the big dogs of WCW were running the place and no Mexican superstars were going to take their spots. Still, even though Eddie Guerrero was disgruntled with WCW management, he did have fun as the leader of the LWO. I'll leave you with this quote from Rey Mysterio. This is from an interview where he was asked about his time in the Latino world order. That was such a brief moment for me, but I do remember that we had a great roster put together. I remember what Eddie did was try to pick out the best Hispanic wrestlers and put them all in one group and try to dominate. If it was going to be complicated to work with the top talent, at least we were going to have fun amongst ourselves. That's what we did every night.